Thank you to Noom for sponsoring today's video. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So I had a source share some footage of Inside Giga Austin, so let's have a look. So very cool to see all of that. And as Elon always says, this factory will basically be raw materials in and vehicles out as Tesla continues to remove itself from the supply chain issues bit by bit. As I mentioned yesterday, there have been reports of this phantom braking going on recently, and there are plenty of articles covering it. So I did want to find a video just to show you what these people are complaining about. Now, I don't want you to think this is like a widespread issue. However, there have been a few hundred complaints that have been reported. So let's have a look at what they're talking about. So as I've said, these are mostly isolated incidents from what I can gather. And honestly, I think the attention around it will help bring it to the forefront of Tesla, allowing them to bring a fix, whether it's a camera recalibration or a software update to help out these users that are experiencing these problems. Today, we got a new note from Morgan Stanley with some interesting takeaways. They say, most auto investors we speak to still struggle with the idea that Tesla could ever be bigger than either Ford or GM. We expect Tesla revenues to be larger than GM and Ford combined by 2027. The zero sum game is hard to see today, should become obvious over the next 24 months. And this wallet share term they're referring to is just the amount of a United States consumer's dollar value that goes toward buying a Tesla. Saying we estimate the typical Tesla selling price is about $60,000 or 30% above the US average selling price, implying an adjusted wallet share of 4.6%. We estimate Tesla share of the US wallet should reach 10% by 2025 and 23% by 2030. So basically the amount of money spent on autos will continue to increase with a bias toward Tesla. Tesla revenues surpass a $300 billion run rate by late 2026, which we estimate should be roughly equal to the global consolidated revenues of GM and Ford combined. Moving on, we have yet another recall. Once again, I just wanna be very clear, this is actually technically still a recall because of how NHTSA has it classified, but I think it's clear as day, it's time for NHTSA to update its classifications. These software updates for Tesla Tesla should not be classified as a recall because for years and years, the auto industry has expected recalls to mean physical things where cars have to go back to the dealer and it could be a huge deal. While most of these updates for Tesla are just going to be software updates. And this one is basically already fixed as these articles are still coming out. However, just to be clear on what's going on, what cars will be affected? Well, it's 21 and 22 Model S, 21 and 22 Model X, 2017 to 22 Model 3, and 2020 to 2022 Model Y. Description of the non-compliance requires the audible seatbelt reminder chime to activate upon the vehicle start when the driver presses the brake pedal after entering the car. If the driver's seatbelt is not detected as buckled, on certain Tesla vehicles, a software error may prevent the chime from activating upon vehicle start under certain circumstances. This condition is limited to circumstances where the chime was interrupted in the preceding drive cycle and the seatbelt was not buckled subsequent to that interruption. Example, the driver exited the vehicle in the preceding drive cycle while the chime was active and later returned to the vehicle, creating a new drive cycle. Basically saying what caused the problem is if that chime came on for the seatbelt and you stopped the car, you had to get out of the car while the chime was on and then later get back in the car, maybe the next time that chime wouldn't come on. This condition does not affect the audible seatbelt reminder chime from activating when the vehicle exceeds 22 kilometers per hour 
and the driver's seatbelt is not detected as buckled. This condition also does not affect the reliability and accuracy of the accompanying visual seatbelt reminder at any point. So in summary, when the driver starts the vehicle without buckling their seatbelt, software monitors and the current state warns the driver to buckle their seatbelt and records that it has warned the driver. However, if the drive cycle state changes like the driver exiting the vehicle during this reminder, the software erroneously stays in the state where it has already warned the driver and does not reset its state to prepare for the next warning. Many of you know I spent three years in the fitness industry trying to help thousands of people to transform their lives. And no, we're not just talking about looks here, we're talking energy, vitality, and overall well-being. That's why I linked up with the sponsor of today's video, Noom. Noom is a consumer-led digital health platform whose main goal is to help anyone achieve a healthier lifestyle through sustainable behavioral changes. Noom leverages human coaches, psychology, and science to empower people to take control of their own health in an enjoyable way. One of the best parts about Noom, in my opinion, is the robust curriculum in the form of short daily lessons to help you get your mind right. The key I learned from years in the industry is learning to love and enjoy the process. One lesson that I think will resonate with almost everyone is the one about thought distortions, like all or nothing thinking and justifications. The best way to overcome this is to start by being aware of them, which Noom will help you do. Noom has an awesome support team well-trained in psychology and nutrition. They also offer group chats for ideas and accountability. So if better hydration, better sleep, more energy, and a healthy relationship with food sound good to you, click the link in the description below for a free Noom evaluation. It's quick and easy and will get you started with a custom plan. Sometimes one small decision can change the entire direction of your life. In how it's being fixed, a firmware release will correct the software error so that the audible seatbelt reminder chime will reset if it is interrupted while chiming. Firmware release 101.1, which includes this remedy, was introduced in the Model 3 and Y production on January 27th this year and in Model S and X on January 28th. Separately, firmware release 4.5, which also includes this remedy, will deploy over-the-air updates to be delivered to vehicles early February 2022. No further action is necessary from owners. And yes, NHTSA classifying all these little software updates as recalls is absurd because you get headlines like this and so many thousands if not millions of people that will read these and think, oh wow, almost a million Tesla cars are being recalled. They must have huge problems. Well, no, that's not the case. And it's actually already fixed via an update. So maybe we need a Tesla petition for NHTSA to change how they classify these recalls for Tesla. Some good news here in the midst of a questionable decision by the United States Postal Service, but the White House and the EPA have penned scathing letters to the USPS over the next gen vehicle plan. The short story here is the USPS has decided to move forward with a contract where it's only going to electrify about 10% of these next generation delivery vehicles. So so I will link both of these letters below and I would encourage you to read them if you have the time. They're actually fairly interesting, but just to keep it very short and sweet, they are calling out the USPS for its flawed process and how it made its decisions, basically using inaccurate and outdated data trying to prove its point. And the one letter goes into detail on the proposed gas fleet, noting that the proposed ICE NGDVs deliver a mediocre improvement of 0.4 miles per gallon over the existing fleet developed over 30 years ago. And the problem here is most of these postal routes have set distances they go the same place every single day and most of them are indeed shorter routes sure maybe a small percent have longer routes where an EV might not make the most sense however only electrifying 10% of this next generation fleet of vehicles seems ridiculous at least to me and these letters are reinforcing that point so we'll see how the USPS responds but as I mentioned I will link both of these articles below they're not overly long and they're probably worth a read if you're interested we talked previously about how the lowered suspension on the model 3 configurator was removed, but they still had the animation when you switched from the long range to the performance that the car lowered, that animation is now gone. So as you can see from this short video, when you switch from the long range to the performance, the Model 3 stays the same, no animation. And if you go to the Model Y page, the lowered suspension is still there. A USA 
Today article actually wrote about that change.org petition that has now received over 51,000 signatures. The article went on to talk about some of the news yesterday about how some people inside the White House were secretly talking about Tesla. Honestly though, even though this whole thing is completely ridiculous and absurd, I think there is a silver lining in that Tesla can just keep executing kind of in the background and stay out of the spotlight and we'll have a chance to continue to buy shares at a discount as so many people are being misled thinking that GM or Ford are leading the EV revolution when in the end, the truth will win out. So I'm not trying to argue it's somehow a good thing that the American government is completely overlooking Tesla. However, I do think there are silver linings. Tesla has updated its location map. So I've just deselected everything but superchargers and let's just go to Charlotte. If you see these gray bolt icons, you can click. It'll give you a target opening for a new supercharger location. So if you wanna check for any updates in your area, I will link this below. From Drive Tesla Canada, Model Y orders in Israel are expected to launch soon as the first shipment of cars arrived this month. According to a source in China, the Globe's publication, they may have revealed a shipment of 2,000 cars on their way to Israel. The shipment would include 1,500 Model 3s and 500 Model Ys. The article says, if the ship arrives on schedule, that means the first Model Y deliveries in Israel are likely to take place before the end of the first quarter. However, I did check the Tesla Israel Design Center does not have the Model Y configurator available yet. However, it's presumed that in the coming weeks, it will go live. That's gonna do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.